Hello and welcome to the second part of the nav tutorial. This time we're going to go over a few more ba a few more basic nav commands that are useful for ensuring a proper nav generation. Last time we went over the uh, very bare bone basics, such as the squares and marking and other things. Uh, let's let's delete the bots real quick. Hello. Nb underscore delete all is how you delete the bots, by the way. So. Yeah, this is the command I typed. It's useful for getting them out of your way, among other things. It also removes all the director bots. Also make sure to type in director underscore stop in the event that your level is actually running the director. It'll prevent any SI from spawning further. So now we have the basic level, basic nav. But there, I added this in with the uh, hammer for the purpose of uh, demonstrating this. Let's say you have a little ledge here, and for some reason nav didn't generate on it. And you're like, okay, I guess I gotta draw my own square now. Okay, so, with uh, in the event that you have something that's like tilted in a weird way, like let's say it's diagonal, or it's too small to generate nav on, or it's just out of the way like this ledge, uh, you can draw your own manual squares by uh, doing nav underscore begin area. You'll hear a little blip, and then you'll be able to like draw a little square. Hey this square will uh, demonstrate where you are actually drawing your own custom squares. They will act the same as any other square once it is completed. Sometimes you won't be able to see it, like when you point straight down or at weird angles and etc. But it is still there even if you can't see it. So. Now that we have a square that's to the size we want, which is going to be about here, we'd open up console gun and do nav underscore end area. And then that'll create a square there. Simple as that. This square will not be connected to any other square by default. And uh, it must be manually connected using add to selected set and connect. Let's do another nav area. So nav underscore begin area. Draw it to the length we want nav underscore end area. If you use the arrow keys in console, you can cycle through previously used commands. That's what I do instead of typing it out again. It's just a fun little fact in case you didn't know. So, once again, nav end area. Then you guys here? Nav begin area. End area. And one more time, begin area. End area. I actually have these to a bind, but I was using the console just to show you. So now if you want to connect them, NAV underscore add to selected set, add to selected set, connect. It doesn't matter if your squares are perfect or not, they will still connect. I'm use my bind to connect the rest of these. Using key binds makes uh, nav generation a lot quicker, especially with drawing squares. Now. Let's say you have this ledge, and you want zombies to be able to drop onto it, but not be able to climb back up. So what you do is you connect these, is you highlight the starting square, and then you hover over the ending square where you want them to drop onto, but you don't highlight it. And then you type nav underscore connect. You'll see a different color line, it'll be dark blue. That means it's a one-way transition. It, the dark Hello? blue line will only transition from the area that it starts at. So if I hover over this and see a dark blue line, that means it can go from here to there. But there's no dark blue line there, which means it can't go back. If it was light blue, I don't know if this is too high. That's too high to make a light blue line. But if it's light blue, uh, then it then it will uh, go both ways. So light blue, like the color between a ladder and a nav square, means it'll go both ways. So let's connect that again, again, and one more time. So now we have a bunch of dark blue lines, meaning they can drop onto this ledge but can't climb back up. Now they need to be able to drop down even further to attack the survivors. It's a very simple process. Hey. So, once that's done, you have now officially drawn your own squares, and you have created one-way connections. It's a, it's a very useful utility for creating uh, navs later on. Now let's save this real quick. Now let's let's take a few of these and just delete them. Okay, just gonna delete them. 
let's say you have this large missing area of nav, and you're like, oh no, I actually need nav here. You can do nav mark walkable, and then nav generate incremental. Make sure it is incremental and not regular generate. If it's regular generate, then it will delete your entire custom nav, all the changes you made, and put back in the default one. However, if you do incremental, it'll do a spot creation and create squares only for the spots that there are no current yeah, squares currently created. It's a very useful tool, and it literally will save you minutes of time, at the least, if you're missing large areas. Um... Anyway, let's say you have two nav areas that are connected hey, in a weird way, like this one, and the one over here. This is a really weird long distance connection, and you're like, okay, that's stupid. Just go into console and type nav disconnect. That'll disconnect two squares so they'll no longer be connected. You can also do it with close squares which means this square will no longer connect to this square, and instead of running from here to here, they will actually run around. Like, if I were to sp spawn a zombie here... Let's see if I can... See? It ran around instead of running right for me. If I reconnect it... It should run right for me. That's how nav connect and disconnect works. So, I created a few more of these weird connections. They don't really matter in the long run, because they connect in a regular way, and a nav analyze should cure them and get rid of them. But it's actually... It's something you want to Hello? avoid in general, but I don't really care, because this is just a tutorial. So, nav save. Nav analyze. Actually, let's not analyze it yet. There's a few marks you need to know for basic uh, flow control. We went over the basic ones like the player start and checkpoint and stuff, but there are a few other ones like mark battle station. This will mark a preferred spot for survivor bots to hold out, so let's say we run through here, and I run over here. The bots will try to stay in or close to that square, and if I'm in this square, they will try to stay in or close to the square instead of like being over there. They shouldn't hunt supplies as much, and uh, battle station marks are good for areas like around miniguns and supply dumps. Then there's, uh, there's another mark, very useful, Mark Obscured. It'll create a little uh, salmon color glow on the uh, square, and that means that zombies and special infected can spawn here, regardless of player sightline. This also marks a safe spawning area for zombies to always spawn. Hello? They will try to spawn in obscure spots as much as possible, just as much as they'll try to spawn in blank spots. Make sure that when you make a spot obscure, you make it in an area that survivors cannot reach. If they can reach it, then they'll be able to see the zombies spawn, and they'll look weird, etc. So right now, if I were to be right here and spawn a horde, I could get zombies just dumping out up there. If I was standing up here, they would also still be able to just dump out of there. There's another mark. Mark empty. This will make a spot empty, meaning nothing will spawn here. Nothing, no wanderers, at least. You do mark no mobs, then that means no mobs will spawn here. It's different from empty. Mobs can still technically spawn in an empty spot, if I remember correctly. However, wanderers can spawn in a no mob spot. If I mark this as uh, no threat, then that means the director will never place a witch or a tank in this spot. You can do this. You can do all three of these marks to large areas to control them as much as you want. If you do mark, let's say, avoid, then the bots, both infected and survivors, will try to run around as much as possible. Anybody hear me? It'll also create a little. Uh, exclamation mark looking thing here that'll tell you that that's a mark of void. They can still run through a mark of void though. Doesn't mean they, it just means they'll try to go around. It's good for marking hazardous areas or areas near hazards. There's mark precise. This is good for areas around cliffs. 
it means that uh, the bots will try to be a lot more careful, they'll try to stick to the square as much as possible, they're a lot less likely to ledge hang themselves. It's a very quick way to uh, ensure bot safety in the simplest form. And then if you make a rescue closet properly using a rescue closet tutorial or if you simply just place a survivor rescue position, you're going to need to uh, mark it as a rescue closet. Rescue closet means that survivors can respawn there and generally it will, the director will avoid putting zombies you in a marked rescue me? closet. And that's, now uh, let's, uh, let's nav analyze this. See if we can uh, get anything different to happen from the last time around. We didn't do much to change the uh, nav, so it should still act pretty similar to the previous tutorial. However, with any luck, we will get a few zombies on that ledge. Uh, we already have one now. See? Now the zombies should see me eventually, assuming the bots don't just straight up shoot it. Let's see if I can just tap it. Nope, that killed it. <laughs> Let's just spawn a zombie up here. Look out! So the zombie should jump down, jump down, it got killed by the bots. So that ledge now works. That's an obscure spot. Let's see if we can get a horde to spawn there. So director underscore force underscore panic events. A good way to test panic events. So no zombies in there. Oh, there we go. So even though we are too close for zombies to spawn there generally, there is a limited range for when they can spawn. They will still spawn in an obscure spot regardless of how close you are. So that's good for making a uh, small map that you need a spawn point really close to the survivors where they're going to hold out. Just make sure that it's out of sight. And that concludes this very basic addendum to the nav tutorial. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, just leave a comment below.